like if those were separate Facebook profile pictures for both of them, you wouldn't necessarily know it's from the same moment. <laughs> Aaron said, quick thumbnail it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We're here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. If you're wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, Cassie and I both have extensive experience and training in both solo and partner dancing. She has about 21 years, I have about 23. So that being said, we are looking, actually, we're looking at an all-star dance tonight, which we don't typically venture into. So I'm excited for that. We are talking about energy resolution and that versus finishing your movement because there's minor differences um but they are important differences and at different levels of skill like it it does it, it's important to know the differences especially because in the in the higher levels you'll see like energy resolution in a more intentional way um, even when it is like just a sudden complete energy resolution. Um, but at lower levels, that is something that can be A, unintentional and B, create kind of problems like um, connection, like poor connection. Um, it can cause like pulling or uh, like arm leading, that type of stuff. Um, so it's important to know the differences. There's three things that we're going to be talking about tonight. One is energy resolution, and that's going to be um, dissolving momentum and getting rid of it or significantly reducing the energy. Um, and then there's going to be complete energy resolution, and that's going to be basically like stopping your movement. And if you don't finish your movement prior to like a complete energy resolution, usually it will look like uh, stopping in the middle of the movement, not completing what you're doing. It can sometimes look a little awkward. It depends. But usually you'll kind of notice that it's like, oh, they stopped what they were doing. It's not like, a, oh, they were, you know, doing something and then stopped. It's a little bit different. So <clears throat> then finishing your movement, it's going to be um, when you are redirecting the momentum and it sometimes will have a mild energy resolution to it, like we were talking about last week with the, um, like the arc of the hip at the end of the anchor, where there's that slight either lowering or raising of the height so that it smoothly flows into the next part <clears throat> from going backwards to forwards or vice versa, whatever. That's just going to be like when you're continuing your movement, um, kind of like dragging through things and, you know, slightly gaining or losing height is what is going to happen when you're finishing your movement. I have a couple other notes, but we can kind of talk about it when we get into the video. We are talking about uh, Stanislav and Sayaka. The link is in the chat. Go ahead and give it a watch. And when you're done, we'll get to analyzing. To the screen share. Doodly doodly doodly. Mm -hmm. As usual, if anybody has any questions during the shenanigans, feel free to unmute yourself or type it in the chat. I can see the chat. So. Excellent. <laughs> so first thing we're kind of looking at here is a, a good example of finishing movement. So what you kind of look at if you look at it at full speed is you see them kind of walking around each other, they stop and then they reverse. But there is some finishing of the movement happening here from both of them actually. So if you watch at the very like beginning of this stopping motion, right? So Stanislav, he stops with his feet and his lower body first, and it kind of looks like he um, just stays still. But if you watch ever so slightly, his upper body rotates so that it's allowing her to um, like absorb into the hand and redirect her. And if you watch what she does, so she kind of moves forward. She shifts ever so slightly forward as he's kind of pausing her. And then she starts moving backward. But you can kind of see that she 
has this moment where she's really like nice and upright with her legs totally straight, but then she goes and softens the knees and backs up, right? So we have that slight um, level change and that's what's helping kind of continue that momentum there. So she is finishing her movement and he's also finishing his movement because like I said, he's allowing the upper body to rotate. And so while his like, uh, mm, lower body but like also kind of abdomen area is is really like stopped in place he's still allowing some movement in the body and so there's still continuing um, momentum there now so this stance in particular these two were looking at um some different moments but it, it's a little bit different than in lower levels like i was mentioning earlier because even the few moments where they do have like complete energy resolution, it's intentional. Um, usually it is because they are paying attention to each other. Um, a lot of times that happens in higher levels when um, something happens on the other end, of the other end of the connection that you are unsure of. So you just kind of stop what you're doing and wait and, you know, use your visual um, following or visual leading, whatever. Technically, if you are leading and you are checking out what your follow is doing, you're kind of following at that point, but <laughs> minor details. <laughs> yeah, something I can't remember if I said this on last week's episode or in a private lesson I taught last week. <laughs> can't remember. But the idea being that as a leader, you lead pattern A you're intending for pattern A to happen. But because of connection and physics and your follow is an independent human being mm -hmm. with a will, <laughs> they will adjust it to some degree. So you'll end up with pattern B. Mm -hmm. The next pattern as a leader that you lead needs to be based off of the B that they danced, not the A that you intended. Mm -hmm. And that is so important. Mm -hmm. I recall you saying that at some point recently. <laughs> Who knows? It might have been in a conversation we had. I think it might have no been in knows. the um, after show. <laughs> the after show, yeah. <laughs> might have been after I stopped recording last week. We'll see. Possibly. I'm not sure. But Honestly, I, I would remember. say it five million times to every leader I know because it is that important. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that... To an extent, like once you lead something and your follow does something different, you are now following. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even though you are leading, you're following. Yep. It's quite paradoxical. Don't think yes. about it too hard or your brain will burn out. So ideally, we want to use um, the two things in conjunction. We don't want to just like completely resolve the energy. We want to first um, <clears throat> finish the movement and then resolve the energy completely if we are going to come to a complete stop like that. Um, so we, we want to try to use those together. However, there are some times where that doesn't happen. Um, but right here, what we're looking at is it kind of looks almost at full speed like there is um, like a stop, like a complete stop kind of in the middle of something. Um, it almost looks like he pulls her forward a little bit before she wanted to be pulled forward, but she's actually like finished her movement before he's moving her forward. Um, and you can also see, it looks like he comes to a stop as well, but he doesn't. So what he's doing is he's taking a step in front of him and then as she's moving back, he's allowing her to kind of help pull him up on top of the foot, right? So we have the upper body still moving forward, even though his feet are in the same place. And it's not like, it's not visually very apparent when you look at it, but it is slight. So right here, you can kind of see he starts at an angle almost. And then as they kind of progress down like together, he comes up over the feet. But then as he comes up on top here, he then softens the knees. So we're not having any like 
complete stopping of the momentum, right? So we don't have any complete energy resolution. We do have a little bit um, in order to just kind of slow down the movement, but it's not a complete energy resolution. There's still movement happening. Mm -hmm. And then one thing I wanna highlight for both of them, and this was uh, a topic that came up, I think last month, is that the idea of different body types someone suggested that that can make quote unquote swing content or like the swing of the hips mm -hmm. more difficult if you have a more ruler shaped body. Yeah. Um, but that isn't true. The mechanics are still the same. It just right. ends up looking slightly different. Mm -hmm. So what I love about both Stanislav and Sayaka is that they have those ruler shaped bodies, but you can still see the full range of motion. Mm -hmm. It just ends up not looking as extreme because of how their bodies are shaped. Right. Um, but it's still, they're still doing the full technique of swing, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate. Yeah. And um, she also doesn't go into a lot of shaping um, like rotationally necessarily. Like she does, but there's not any um, like countering necessarily it's all like one direction for the most part when she does have some rotation at the end of the anchor so like we were looking at last last week with yenny was that last week i believe <laughs> I <think> so, so. <laughs> this, this past seven days has felt like an entire year to me yeah a little so bit. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but like we were looking at last week with Yenny, where she made that really, really beautiful shape, right? right? She had mm -hmm. some contra body happening and she, uh, Sayaka isn't really doing much of that. She doesn't have quite that same contra body happening and she's not um, really sitting deeply into the hip, but she is still settling and she's settling enough for it to be correct and make a difference so yeah so you can see right here her prepping for her settle and then finishing it right there so mm -hmm. there's a really minor swing to the hips but it's still there and it's mm -hmm. commensurate with how her body functions right Oh, there was one other thing I was okay. going to say is that you can see as she settles the hips back, she slightly raises upwards, right? So we have that finishing of the movement there. So we have a little bit bent knees and then as we settle, legs are straightening and she's coming upward ever so slightly. Yep. And then she goes down a little bit as she moves into that one. So right here is our first example of just like a complete energy resolution without any prior like finishing of the movement. So you can see as he's coming around, <coughs> so as they're coming around here in this pattern, he kind of releases and she is still moving backwards. And as soon as he starts dropping down, right? So first of all, he does not have a prep for that. So there's not him like going upwards to go down. He's just dropping down. So that's completely stopping his energy from going back and forth, said, said, whatever. He's now going downwards. So it's very different. And she is, as soon as he drops down, she's stopping, right? So she doesn't really continue and finish her movement. <coughs> Sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. Um, but she's moving backwards and she doesn't finish settling with the hips. She kind of stays a little bit forward and moves ever so slightly, um, into split weight, but really she's not settling. She's not finishing what she's doing. It does not look the same as the previous anchor that we saw, right? So it's not her finishing that movement. And we can see as he comes up out of this, she then gets um, settled back before they go forward. <laughs> it's even better in slow motion. It really is. Wag. It's excellent. 
These two are highly entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of my favorite dances to this song. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah. I don't know. There's something about this song. You tend to get the same dance no matter who's dancing. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, it's very similar. Um, but yeah, this is a really fun dance. So if we watch here, so he's down on his knee, right? He's not moving at all except for his head looking at the audience. <laughs> Andrew said that <laughs> kneeling is such a stand thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> From what I've seen of his dancing, it it seems about accurate. <laughs> Aaron said, so we stand, stand. <laughs> Well done, sir. Mm-hmm. Well done. <laughs> so as he's coming up, so he's he's down, he's completely stopped with his energy. He looks forward to the audience. He presses back up. And you see, like, because he's coming up, what he does is he comes up and over to send her back, right? So he's raising straight up and he comes up onto his toes in order to give her some extra momentum to settle backwards. Yeah, and as he's rising up and coming forward a little bit, she's shifting forward on her right foot. So it's like a prep Mm -hmm. for the prep. Yep. Because now there's that um, connection through his right arm and the Mm -hmm. elbow has become the center counterpoint again. And then he can extend his arm and shift away from his arm Mm -hmm. in order to encourage her to connect back and settle into his hand. Yeah. Um, Generally, as soon as there is some drastic change up or down, there is a large change in the connection, right? So there's not going to be as much connection. Even if you're still like the same distance apart, the connection is going to be different if there is something higher or lower that is drastic. And while we're here, I just want to... highlight how well he's doing shaping her uh one Mm because they only have a close position handhold his right hand on her back yeah and he ends up shaping her to her right through this step into the second step they haven't even touched open hands yet so all of that shaping was coming from his right hand which is how it should be done Mm -hmm. yes it's a very good example yeah So here we have a good example of using these two things in conjunction. So using that finishing of the movement with the energy resolution, right? So we have a large buildup prior to what they're doing right here because there is a um, spins of some sort. I don't remember exactly what they're doing, but there's rotation. There's rotational momentum. And it's building because it gets faster as they're getting to the end of it, right? And so then we get to the end of it and we have this um, duck under his arm, I think Mm -hmm. is what happened. Yeah. (laughs) So we have that rotational energy and we have it translated, right? So she goes under his arm, right? So we have going down a little bit, then they both kind of come up. Right. And so both of those things are kind of nullifying that rotational energy, that really strong rotational energy that they had. Right. So we're going through all of this and they're continuing. Right. So that down and up, it's kind of all in one movement. So it is um, connected. They're finishing that movement. Right. So it would look a little bit different if there was just like complete energy resolution there. Right. It would a be really hard to do. So it would look very awkward, but it would look very disconnected and all of this because they're staying connected this whole time. And likely if there was some complete energy resolution, right, it's not going, they're not going to be connected. So they're not going to be able to tell what the other is doing. Mm -hmm. but so we have that finishing of the movement um, throughout that rotational energy we bring it down bring it up so we're prepping and then we just drop right and so that is the um, energy resolution there and it's a little bit different because there is the prep for it 
And then similarly, she knows she's going to come up right away at the mm-hmm. end based on the music right so because mm-hmm. she could have just completely stopped her energy right here yeah. but she doesn't she keeps mm-hmm. it going yeah. and that also makes it easier for stan to be able to help assist her back up mm-hmm. yeah you can really see um as she drops she catches herself mm-hmm. <laughs> Aaron said leg day <laughs> right i don't i don't even want to think about that it hurts my knees looking at that personally. Yep. Yep. Like same. I could do it, but do I want to? No. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why? I, I want to make different life choices. It's nice to look at. It's fun to look I at. I know. I am jealous <laughs> AF. Uh, anyways. So <laughs> you can really see as she drops down. So they both actually drop down at the very beginning of it. Right. So after she goes under the arm, they come up, they both drop down. And he's dropping down because he really needs to be able to um, assist her and kind of slow some of the momentum that's going downward. But we both have, you know, these kind of um, sudden drops that's happening out of that prep upward. And she's catching herself about... uh, like halfway through the drop I would say ish Mm -hmm. and and that's what's helping her come up right so what's helping her pop right back up is she's engaging the legs about halfway through so she is kind of having this drop in energy resolution but it's not lasting the whole way if it were to last the whole way she would stay down there right so and maybe tear an Achilles Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Her ankle flexion is impressive. <laughs> um, but yeah, so because she's catching herself, that's helping her uh, redirect her energy back up. And he's also assisting her with that. Mm-hmm. So we have two different things right here. So we have one example of finishing a movement with um, some nice redirecting of the movement that's happening. And that's from him. Um, he, he knows what he's doing, right? So rather than like stopping and then continuing to move again, right? He has this um, sidestep and he rotates on it. And he kind of uses that back foot that he takes or the, the left foot. He kind of uses that as a break as he rotates around to move him forward. So he has that continuing momentum throughout this. <clears throat> but if you watch her, she doesn't know what he's doing, right? Because this is a very sudden rotation. <laughs> and it doesn't look any different up until like this point right here where he's like turning away from her. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so she is taking this opportunity to be a fantastic follow and she's stopping and waiting to see what he's doing right and so while she is having a like a complete energy resolution really suddenly it is because she is trying to figure out what is happening and waiting and that's super important and a fantastic follow quality um But like I said, a lot of times at lower levels, that is something that you'll see unintentionally, like at the ends of anchors or um, even just kind of uh, sinking into like a stretch, right? It kind of will sometimes disconnect unintentionally because there is some energy resolution from one side or the other um, Mm -hmm. at lower levels, but... You can see here, she's really just paying attention to what he's doing. So she's stopping. And the reason that you can see that there's that like complete energy resolution is because once she like takes that step, I think it's her right foot. Once she takes that step, she kind of just stops. Like there's not any other movement. She's not like swaying back and then coming back to center or, you know, she's not really doing anything else. She is stepping and realizes he's doing something else and she just is done. You can really see how she's like, okay, we're doing an audience thing. So she mm-hmm. looks at the audience for a second, but then you can see her eyes immediately start tracking him to pay mm-hmm. attention. And so she's managing to still follow while still performing at the same time. 
mm-hmm. which I really appreciate. And she's also um, split weight, yeah. which is making it easier for her to choose which foot to push off of, depending on what he's going to do next. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's something that is a really good skill for follows is being able to pause yourself in a position where you can choose what to do next. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is quite hard to learn. Um, But it it involves a lot of like good balance and um, being aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so this is a really good example from her of just sudden like complete energy resolution. And we can't really see very well like what their arms are doing that are connected, but basically they are going to be at like a nice V. And as he moves away, we can kind of see it a little bit more. But really, because she is like coming to a complete stop and he's kind of rotating away from her, but he's not leading her to rotate with him, that connection has kind of been dropped. So she's not taking any information from him through that connection. She's doing it visually, which is why you can see her eyes go to him. Mm -hmm. And there's another moment um, a little bit later on in this video as well, where they kind of both have a moment where they do things independently of each other because their connection um, has been just kind of changed because of energy resolution. Yeah. And I just want to highlight the handhold once we can see once they leave. That's Mm -hmm. not a very ergonomic position for either of them, which is further indicative of it being a more neutral connection through this Mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. And you can really see that um, his arm and her arm are moving at separate times. So there's not a chain reaction like you normally see with the lead and follow. And a lot of times, like a good way to see that is like her arm is moving a little bit forward as he's moving away, just because the tension is increasing ever so slightly as he's moving further away, just because of the distance. But her shoulder isn't going anywhere, right? If her shoulder Mm -hmm. is going somewhere, that's going to tell you that there is some connection there. Or at the lower levels that could be indicative that the follow is disengaging their frame and just letting it go Mm -hmm. with their partner (laughs) fly be free shoulder (laughs) it's true but usually that's like you'll see the um the shoulder and the arm kind of come forward on their own a little bit more um Mm -hmm. if it's connected it's going to be like the shoulder and the body yeah there will be a, a a chain of cause and effect yeah through the connection Mm-hmm. So, good example for him now. He's kind of doing whatever that is. <laughs> the Mick Jagger. Sure. <laughs> I appreciate they're not doing like the full funky chicken like <laughs> Mick Jagger. Because that, that always makes me so uncomfortable. Now, you can see that he just kind of stops right here, right? So, his right hip kind of comes up. And then it never really goes anywhere else. It kind of settles back down ever so slightly, but like his leg is still popped, right? And he has his body forward, even though his weight is mostly on that back leg. So it's really like he's just completely stopping in the middle of what he's doing. It's really a nice call and response because he essentially Mm -hmm. just made her do that. Yep. To have his moment. Mm -hmm. And now he's like, okay, she can have her moment. And he (laughs) is at the ready. Exactly. Oh, hey, it's the joke I made last week, (laughs) right? About that. (laughs) Um, I was going to, what was that? Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I warned you I was bad tonight. (laughs) Uh, Shoot, I don't remember what I was going to say. Um. Oh, I think I was going to say that that call and response where he realizes that she needs to have a moment because he did his thing is a really good reason to have that like complete energy resolution. Mm -hmm. 
That's one reason that I wanted to look at this dance in particular, because there are some really good examples of like just complete energy resolution, but it's intentional in them, right? Mm -hmm. It's not anything that's just like, oh, their arm is disconnected suddenly or, you know, it's intentional. And I appreciate that. And they're not doing it in such a way where they're like shooting themselves in the foot and it makes it really hard to escape that Mm -hmm. stopped state. They're they're at the ready and can respond really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you notice, like when they are kind of coming to a stop, a lot of times they are either kind of split weight or have weight on both feet, right? It's not like they're completely weighted over one foot for the most part. Like even here, like he is weighted more back, but his his front foot is on the ground enough so that there is going to be some weight into it. So that's something that makes it really easy to adjust what you're doing is having weight on both feet. It doesn't have to be like split weight necessarily, but if you have weight on both feet, then you are ready to either release the foot or switch over to the other foot. Like you're ready for either. We have another moment here of um, finishing the movement and then having that energy resolution um, with Stanislav. So you can see what happens here is he's moving to the side, right? So he's moving to his left side. And then he is readjusting, right? So he steps on the left foot and then the right foot comes up and moves underneath him, but he's preparing himself to come split weight, right? So even though he is now moving to the left, he's not doing it in a way that all of his body momentum is going left. He's kind of moving it back and forth so that it can easily settle in the center for him to be split weight and have this nice like moment of just stopping. And so you can tell that like he really is finishing that movement, right? We tend not to be a fan of chugs on the <laughs> West Coast Swing, but these ones are delightful. It's, it's fun. I don't mind watching them. I personally hate doing them. Yeah, they're quite jarring. It's vertical That's... whiplash through the spine to the crown of the head, and <laughs> yeah, it's not pleasant. <laughs> they, they look fun when they are done at correct moments. <laughs> yep. But, you know, just personal preference. I don't like doing them. (laughs) Right. But uh, they both do such an excellent job of not going, like, bouncing up and down. Mm -hmm. They really maintain the illusion of just the the feet coming up and then going back down. Mm -hmm. And then the stare down is just so excellent. I know. (laughs) She's like, oh, that's what we're doing? Okay. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Oh, we're talking about the chugs. There is a technique to it. Yeah. And like like Cassie was just saying, you don't want to have that bouncing. We want to keep the knees um, and the body pretty much on the same level. So it involves breaking at the knees mm-hmm. <laughs> and moving them forward. Yeah. It should have that the upper body should feel like a very smooth experience, kind of like in a moonwalk. Yeah. And then while we're here, like I was talking earlier about um, ruler-shaped body types, I want to highlight the S through her body into this step mm-hmm. right here. Because mm-hmm. she said, what's the body types? Okay, so I uh, was talking about how, and this was brought up, I think, last month uh, with someone who joined us and asked this question. They, they seem to be under the impression that those with a more ruler-shaped body type have more difficulty articulating their hips, particularly for swing content. Mm-hmm. Um, but that isn't necessarily true. The, the body mechanics are exactly the same. It's just that the end result is less extreme looking. Mm-hmm. There's less high dynamic range through yeah. the motion, but it's still the same motion. It just ends up not looking as, as 
extreme as someone with more hourglass body type, particularly mm-hmm. on uh, women. Yeah. And um, so I wanted to highlight the way she uh, swivels into this one it creates a much more S-like shape because Mm -hmm. she also has some rotation into it, which is really lovely um, on her specifically because she does tend to have a more limited range of motion through her Mm -hmm. hip swing. Um, But just by adding angles like this, you can increase the, um, turn up the volume on that shaping. Yep. Um, So there are it's it's just a fun thing to be aware of and to start paying attention to as you get more advanced to become really aware of what your body type can create easily mm-hmm. versus not easily and then learn tricks like this yeah where you can turn up the volume even though your body type isn't quote unquote the one that makes it easy <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah um i want to add to that that when you are dancing in comps it is it's very important that the people judging know what they're looking at because Mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, it's just kind of a glance past. And if you have a more, you know, straight body type, if you don't, um, if it's not as visible on you that you are settling or, you know, doing proper mechanics, like they're not going to um, see that as easily. So it's something to be aware of. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's really, it's, it's really about the judges, but um, you can see it if you're paying attention. It's just not as visible as like, if you're looking at Nicole Ramirez, right? You know, like she she, has... Yeah, she's very curvy. And so it's very easy to see when she does like slight settles in her um, body. Like it's, it's very easy. Whereas like here with Sayaka, like it's, she's doing, you know, like the same degree for the most part. Like it's not as if Nicole is just doing so much more than everyone else. Right. She's not, it just looks that way. Right. And then the other, a couple of other things to keep in mind along the same lines is that as a follow, if you're in a competition and your leader isn't actually counterbalancing your weight and or momentum, you have to manage that motion by yourself and not settle into the connection and yet you have to still give the illusion that you're doing so which is much harder Mm -hmm. and um, then additionally if you're in a larger body that isn't as thin it does affect what the way your lines look Mm -hmm. and you could be doing the exact same angles the exact same lines with your your skeleton but if if a judge isn't doesn't have the discernment to understand that you're you're giving that excellent line despite what your body type may or may not be that's Mm -hmm. on them that's not on you um and and a lot of times that does have to do with just the speed at you know which they're looking at everyone it doesn't it's not as much of a problem if you get into like more of a spotlighted situation where they're just kind of looking at you or you and you know a couple other you know, people like it's, it's not as much of an issue, but like I said, like there are some tricks that you can work out, um, that you can use like during cons, if that is something that you are concerned about. Um, I know personally, I do adjust sometimes, um, during comps rather than just my normal dancing, just for the visual effect. Right. And this is why the more advanced you get as a dancer, the more you stare at yourself in a mirror. That is true. We are, <laughs> we are micromanaging our lines, people. <laughs> yes. Uh, Aaron said, do the body shapes pertain to leads as well? Oh, yes, definitely. Yes. Yeah. It's a different shape to some extent, but yes. His faces are just so great. I know. <laughs> I kept framing through this one in particular. And I was like, mm. yeah. <laughs> I am proud of the way he cheated this high kick. Because not only is he like, neoing back on his standing leg and lifting that heel oh uh, so good mm-hmm. that's <laughs> funny because i was i was going to add into that so he really <laughs> is finishing his movement here like even though he's 
technically like it looks like he's stopping and doing a high kick he's continuing to move not only forward but upward <laughs> with <laughs> part of his body he's moving at a diagonal <laughs> mm. so he's continuing right and then as his leg comes down he's continuing to move that upper body up over that standing foot right so we have a complete movement even though yes technically he's planting the foot and kicking we're still moving through it but mm -hmm. yes, he did cheat it. And the way that you cheat those is you bend your knee and you lean back. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I am a bad influence this evening. <laughs> <laughs> so like we we're saying, he continues his momentum through this whole thing. It's funny because she then, A, as she comes around him, so she rotates and then she kind of comes to an end of that rotation and she like, um, like takes over her own movement, right? So she's not necessarily relying on what he's giving her. She's kind of moving more independently once she is kind of behind him and sees what he's doing. So she finishes, redirects herself as she comes up here, right? So she actually has more of a pause in her energy and momentum just because of the way that she goes into this kick, right? So with him, we saw that he not only bent the knee, but he leaned back. She's kind of choosing to stay upright. So then she is really pausing right up over her foot. So she does kind of have a moment where she's not moving like directionally it's just the leg that's kicking up and she does rotate slightly as her heel lifts off the ground but she's not um, the upper body is not really moving in the same way Mm. Yes. So we have a moment here of um, like complete energy resolution again. And it's a fun moment from him. So mm -hmm. you can see him kind of send her right into this little, I don't know, whatever they're doing, like a little hip swing thing. Um, and he sends her and then he kind of pauses himself. Like he moves to the right and he kind of comes back slightly but then he just kind of stops right and so he is now no longer like giving her a uh, connection really apart from just kind of being there on her back um, it's just everything's paused right and so he didn't have any like <laughs> it's so good <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he doesn't have any like really completion of that movement because he, if he would have completed it, he probably would have come more up over either split weight or continued to the left, right? It just kind of pauses. She's continuing her momentum because she has that swing going on, though, um, she once he kind of stops her she's not uh shifting as much back and forth she's kind of staying more over that right foot andrew said stan's audience engagement is off the charts it is yeah <laughs> i was once um in a local practice situation with a portland group and i was dancing with danielle white for some feedback and the feedback was like, engage us, engage <laughs> us, the audience. And I had done some sort of starter step that was playful to the music. And it was very much me and Danielle uh, just engaging with each other. Um, and then they put on the same song after giving us that feedback. And then all I did was open us up 
to face them. So I opened up the closed position. I still had my right hand on her back. And we did the exact same playful thing, but this time facing the audience. And the crowd went wild. I am making the point that it's little things like that that can make yes. a, a huge difference. Yes. I went um, back too far. Okay. <laughs> I also want to add on to that. In terms of audience engagement, it is super important. However, a lot of times what we see in um, people that are newer to spotlights, so we don't really see it with the champions as much, but um, sometimes, you know, baby all-stars or uh, advanced when advanced happens to have spotlighted finals, you'll see that uh, the partners are not really focusing on each other because they know they're supposed to be engaging the audience, Right. but really you don't need to do that the whole time. Like that should not be the focus. The focus should be the partnership. You should be focusing on your partner and you should have those moments where it is powerful. And you think about like, okay, here's the moment where I'm going to engage the audience. The rest of the time you should be clicked in with your partner, really. Right. And that's what we're seeing here. Like, even though he has really fantastic audience engagement, the rest of the time he's really like focused in on what she's doing and mm -hmm. vice versa. Yeah, and I would say, especially for those those beginnings of a spotlight, the the thing to gauge is like, do I know this person well, and do we already have some sort of banter as mm -hmm. friends? Yeah. And if you do, I'd say go for it. Have a playful starter step. But if it's a true Jack and Jill, or it's someone you don't normally dance with, mm -hmm. that you don't feel a hundred percent comfortable and safe with, just because there isn't that familiarity yet, focus on just strong dancing and engaging with each other for the beginning of your dance and that is often so much more engaging than like awkwardly pandering to the audience mm -hmm. and not paying attention to each other like Alicia was talking about yeah um talking about that reminds me of that one particular thumbnail um from I think it's Sea to Sky I think it's Ben and Victoria where he's like lounging on the ground and she's like way across the floor <laughs> because that's how you start out a check and show. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, Cause that's what it is when you're, when you're watching the champions and, and the high level all-stars dance together, they know mm -hmm. each other so well, they've danced with each other forever yeah. that they just, they already have a banter as people. Mm -hmm. And then, they both dance at the same high level so it just translates to the dancing so they're just having fun with each other and that's what makes it so engaging yeah but if you don't have that pre-existing relationship with your spotlight partner don't try to force it because we can tell you're forcing it <laughs> yes and it's awkward okay thank you for coming to my ted talk so um right here we're looking at her and this is a really good example of resolving energy to finish the movement, which is not really something we've looked at so far. So we've looked at finishing the movement to then resolve the energy, right? Where you continue through what you're doing and then you stop. What she's doing is she's dropping down out of this um, pencil turn that she's in. And that is helping her slow down and allowing her to um, come out of that rotation. Because once you get into those rotations, especially if you're getting a lead that's like really um, strongly <laughs> rotating you and pumping the uh, connection, it's hard to get out of. So a good way is exactly what she does, right? So you change the height of where you're at in that rotation. So her dropping down, she just bends that standing leg and that allows her to really easily come out, right? And so she places the left foot and continues that rotation. So she's not immediately just breaking out of it and stopping her momentum. She is um, dropping down, placing the foot and continuing the rotation as she's dropping through, right? And you can even see her upper body continues to drop down as she's coming around. Yes, so this last one, we're looking again at two separate things happening. So we're looking at him having like a finishing on the movement and then stopping and having that energy resolution, but we're having her and she's kind of doing just a complete energy resolution. 
And once again, it's because she's trying to figure out what he's doing, right? So she sees him come to a stop into this power pose. <laughs> yeah. That's how I'm explaining that. Um, <laughs> and she notices that he's doing something different, right? So then she stops and kind of waits until he does something. And so we can see, right, so she's going through these kicks, just kind of like he's doing, but she doesn't finish it. She kicks out and pulls halfway in, and then she just kind of stops there, right? So it's not a pulling in underneath her. We're not completing that movement because she's trying to figure out what he's doing. Say one of the ways that you can really tell that she stopped in the middle of a movement is because she has a somewhat bent leg um, out in front of her. A lot of times, um, if you see a nice line, you probably are finishing a movement. Usually, if there's you know some kind of bend, then it's not necessarily um, complete, depending on what you're doing. But if you're kind of standing there and there's not a nice leg line happening sometimes. That is why. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments, concerns, or bad jokes? <laughs> yeah, a um, like comment, I guess. I know I've heard like Sarah talk about how, like even though the crowd isn't supposed to be like a determining factor, how she wants to make sure the crowd is like that extra judge. And like having been there live and watched all of those, the crowd went absolutely bananas at the end of that. It was so loud. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> yeah. That was an excellent dance. And like it's I said, fun. that's a hard song to dance to because there have been great dances to it. And then there have been lots of copycat <laughs> dances to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a weird song. It is. It's fast. Yeah. People don't like fast. <laughs> Next week, I believe we are going to be talking about all of the first place dances from a single event. Are um, we? Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, we yeah. are. It's, uh, I know. It's going to be February next month. I know. <laughs> we, we're we gonna have chosen to, those dances. <laughs> we're going to have to plan out in advance again because time goes by too quickly. Thank you all for joining us this week. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. We will be back next week with another episode. Adios. All right. Shall we commence it? Yeah, that was cool. a strange way to say that, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I told you. I told you the jokes were going to be extra bad tonight because I'm dissociating. It's great. Like, it, it took my brain a second to process what you said <laughs> because that was a strange way to say that. It's like, we're doing what? <laughs> we actually had an idea to do an actual podcast. Or it's mm -hmm. just audio. And it's Alicia and I blind reacting to dance videos. And we don't tell anyone what video we're watching or who is in yep. it. Oh, Nothing. God. So we can be as off the cuff, roasty as we so choose. No roasty. Mm. I would love, I would love for you to do that, but I'd like to see your faces. Yes. <laughs> so like, so like we don't get to see the video, but like you know, like a three minute something where you guys watch it all the way through and like you can pause and talk and whatever. But like, I want to see your faces and just be like, what is she doing? Or like, <laughs> what on earth? Just that would be. And we can watch it. I don't need sleep. I need and answers. Like, and like uh, film ourselves r blind reacting. That, that would that. work. Then I'd love would blind react. That's what I thought it was. I just, I keep. Mm. Ever since the Chantel Chantal debacle, I don't trust <laughs> myself. How's everybody doing? This is a <clears throat> consecutive Wednesday with a historical event. I hear people talking. Is that only me? Am I haunted? No, I heard it. Okay. All right, I am ready. ready. All right, cool. Alicia was kind enough to do all of the work for this week's episode <laughs> because poor little me has been doing a launch for her life coaching business this week and has had no leftover brain juice. So <laughs> thank you, Alicia. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a name for our audience. Should we just call them nerds? But we'll, we'll think about the, the nerd candy. 
Yeah, I'm going to shut up now. Um, Andrew said dance nerds and Aaron said dude layers. What? <laughs> dude layers. <laughs> oh, doodle ears. Doodle ears. Gotcha. My doodle a doo. <laughs> doodle a dudes. Damn, it's gendered. Uh, but it's so good. Aaron said, I still need to see what moves Mick Jagger does. <laughs> right? Whenever I think of Mick Jagger, I just like, I just think about like the giant mouth mm -hmm. moving. Yeah. Those are the moves that I envision. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, will Andrew's, shut up again. <laughs> Andrew said they saw Kevin Kane do it allegedly. Yes, I remember yeah. him saying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, why? But also, I'm not surprised. Moving on. <laughs> he's doing whatever he's doing. I think we all have a pants ripping story. I think that's a rite of passage as a dancer. <laughs> I don't. Uh, <laughs> that's because a large part of my life, um, I had to practice and dance in like, you know, stretchy pants. So. Gotcha. And now I, was... I just don't care. <laughs> Actually, had I thought we could do an episode of our lives in solo dance before mm. West Coast Swing, <laughs> and we could just talk, just talk about tell stories. Mm -hmm. That might be fun. I could I could share some videos of me slamming my body into the floor because I have videos of that. But yeah, you know, mine, it's intentional. <laughs> mine are all on VHS and are somewhere in a musty garage, and may or may not be revivable. We don't know. I could probably get my grandma to send me pictures if you want to <laughs> see me in my little in leotard action. for when I was in uh, <laughs> I was in a production of Cats. Oh, <laughs> in preschool at a French American immersion school. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, my my first performance. Um, it was. Well, actually, it was the second year. Uh, it was themed, um, and I was an alligator. So I had this bright neon leotard with a bunch of feathers and sequins. And I have pictures of that, Fabulous. which I'm not going to be sharing. <laughs> but, you know, you can imagine that. It's fun. <laughs> why so serious why so serious stan love how he looks back at the audience i know <laughs> he's like you're appreciating this right 